uh, northern Rakhine, the full area. UNICEF and our partners still don't know what the true picture is of the children who remain in northern Rakhine because we don't have enough access. What we do know is troubling. Prior to August 25, we were treating 4,800 children suffering from severe acute malnutrition. These children are no longer receiving this life-saving treatment. All 12 of the outpatient therapeutic nutrition centers run by our partners are closed because they were either looted, destroyed, or the staff can't get to them. While the eyes of the world are on the situation in northern Rakhine and in Cox's Bazar, over 60,000 Rohingya children remain almost forgotten, trapped in 23 camps in central Rakhine that they were driven into by violence in 2012. Pre-existing pre restrictions on the movement of people into and out of the camps were tightened first after the October 26 outbreak of violence and again after August 2017, making it even harder for humanitarian workers to deliver aid to children and making already poor conditions in the camp even worse. To chip in the latest diphtheria um, figures, as of 7 January, we have um, 3,649 clinically suspected cases with a total death of 30, the last death reported on 2 January, so that has a case fatality rate of approximately 1%. Um, nearly 350,000 children between 6 weeks and 15 years were given diphtheria-containing um, vaccines. In January, we're working with the local partners on the ground, with local NGOs, with government authorities to distribute the food. We're coordinating closely with the ICRC, the International Committee of the Red Cross, uh, so that we don't overlap. It's still hard for us to have a comprehensive picture of all the needs. Uh, everybody needs more access, um, and we are obviously extremely concerned about the food insecurity and the undernutrition in Rakhine State, which already was bad before the outbreak of the violence.